everybody, it's Marnay. I'm here at Sheets So Creative, and today we're having us a little so day. And we waited a long time for this. <laughs> yes. We've talked about it forever, but um, we thought we'd bring you all in and let you see what we're sewing. So um, what I'm working on, I'm working on some cute little popsicles. Erin found me this little uh, pattern for this. Is this a free pattern? It is a free pattern. This is a free pattern. I'm gonna move these out. I got three just kind of samples to give me a guide. But it's um, Daydreams of Quilt, multi-flavored popsicle block pattern. And what I got was a jelly roll that was uh, sent to me by Marie. And I saw it and I thought rainbows. So I thought it would be great for this popsicle um, quilt block. Uh, I'm making a quilt for Adelie because she just had a birthday and Easter's coming. And I want to make that little girl quilt because she inspires me as I've inspired her. I guess. So I think it'd be fun. What are you working on, Erin? I am working <clears throat> on, um, we just got our new Villa Rosa patterns in for the month. Uh -huh. And um, one that came in this month is a table runner called the Perfect Trio. Cool. And it just takes three fabrics and it looked pretty quick and easy. So I, like I figured I would just throw some of our different holiday fabrics together and uh, whip up a few table runners just to kind of show that you don't have to go by what's on the picture. Yeah. You know, so. I just tell people, color your own picture. You've got quite an array of fabric I there do. in different styles. Yeah, so I'm excited to um, go yeah, through everybody and. Everybody likes the quick and easy project. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I've got a nice spring one here. Um, our Valentine's fabric. We were just kind of rearranging that for putting it away and That's getting really the St. Patty's and Easter out. So I grabbed some from there. Um, I grabbed some Easter fabric so with Easter pretty. coming up. Um, I also <clears> grabbed <throat> a border print. I like that. To it show just how simple, you know, I used this border print here. Look at that, the daisies and the plaid yeah. and just so, and the bees. I love the bees. Everybody loves bees. So actually this one, all I did was use the border print and another fabric. What a um, great idea. Yeah, because I used the center portion for the center portion of the table oh. runner. And then um, this one I use. That I love. I can't wait to see what that one's different look like. Different style border print. Look um, at them, the sun and moon. Yeah, and so stars. I fussy cut it so that it oh. says um, you are the sun, the moon, and the stars. I love so that. I fussy cut it so that that shows. And then um, I had to do some adjustments to it to make it fit because my fussy cut piece was bigger than the rest mm. of what the pattern called for. So I've got a few different... Everybody likes a challenge. Yeah, a I've got a few so different challenge challenges yep. going on. So I'm going to start out with the buy the pattern ones and then work up to my cool. challenges. Well, I've already got mine so. started. I've got my corners here and what mine is these are just a jelly roll of two and a half inch strips and then I sub cutted them into four and a half inch strips and then I just sewed four different colors together so and then I chose the sprinkle for the background and the popsicle stick is a one inch by two and a half and then the two bottom pieces is a two and a quarter by two and a half and it just makes this little cute popsicle stick and I think when I put my rows together I'm going to stagger them um, one higher than the other and then I'll just fill in with the with the, the the sprinkles fabric and make borders and I probably will put six in a row six times four yeah six in a row with four down and probably put a generous border on I'm not really sure yet I'm just having fun so Hey, I'm that's, just yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I'm just like this is such a simple little project, and it'll be so fun. But once I get it laid out, after I get a bunch of popsicles made, I'll kind of figure out how how many they should be across. But I think I got enough pieces cut up for 24 popsicles, so I'll see how big that makes. And I've still got leftovers, so I can make more if I need to. But super simple. So I'm gonna lose my my place of where I'm at. I'm just kind of making these little corner pieces for the top of the popsicle to make it shape. I cheat when I do this and most people draw lines. I, I don't want to sit in front of the room. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't like to draw so I lines. So I thought if I can fold it in half, you know, and just make a crease line with my iron. Yeah. I'll mm -hmm. choose the easy path. 
check something here real quick because it's not my regular machine so and I do have a tool here somewhere for doing this but because it's not my regular machine, I just want to check my quarter inch. Yeah, and you know, every machine sure. sews differently. Yeah. So if you start a project on one machine, you won't stick to that one yeah. machine. Otherwise, you're going to have a wonkied out freaking, um, freaking, <laughs> freaking, yeah. Um, yeah, you don't want to have a wonky. Wonky quilt. Yep, because everything will be uneven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a nice little tool for checking my quarter inch, but, um, you know, believe it or not, everything's such a mess, I don't know where it is right now. <laughs> I know, I was You checked your stuff. quarter inch, was it good? Yes. Yes, it was. Yep. I guess I can turn the speed up. Got these no, come down for the I kids. I'm too slow on this and it kind of rattles, and I'm like, well, then when I go faster, it gets a little better, so I don't know. <laughs> I get nervous. I'm still nervous with this machine. Oh, uh, don't be nervous. When I speed it up, it kind of smooths itself out. So I'm going to just kind of, because I have so many of these that I pulled, because I could make up my mind, imagine that. Yeah. Um, I'm things? just going to kind of chain piece. Yeah, that's I'm work on all of them at once. I made a bunch of popsicles, and then... I'll throw a bunch of corners on, and now we're up on the popsicle stick. Cause like it gets mundane when you do the same thing over and over again. Yes. So I, I yeah. can't break it over. Get excited about how things are gonna look and get ahead of myself. After talking and wasn't paying attention, imagine that. I know how that is. I have made so many mistakes on stuff, and then I have to get out the seam ripper. Ugh. My uncle taught me that that's called frogging. Frogging? Yeah, because you rip it, rip it, rip it. <laughs> what a fun. Oh, I hate <laughs> seam ripping. I do too. Somebody sent me a really nice seam ripper, and it's wooden. Ooh, one end it's it's got a cover on it and one end's a stiletto and the other one's a seam ripper. I didn't bring it with me today, but man, and I there's a name on it too and I forgot what it what it was. But I just got it in a box and I'm like, I love that seam ripper. I think Marie might might have been a Marie's stuff, but she sent me quite a bit. Oh my god. And that's something in my sewing room. Is having a sharp seam ripper. Because I used a to must. have like three of those little ones that would come with your machine. Oh. And I had my favorites, and it was always on my station on my desk. And if somebody picked that up, I was losing my mind. Who took my seam ripper? Because <laughs> Jim or Glenda would come over and, you know, if they couldn't find the other ones, they would take mine. And then they didn't get put back. And then I'm like losing it because none of them were sharp, only the one. So, and it's, you gotta have a sharp seam ripper. It has been so long since I have sat and sewed that I didn't even know if I'd remember how to do this. <laughs> Good enough. The moths in that part of my brain are going, wait, 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 wait. You got a good home here. <laughs> I try to sew every day. Even since the fire, you know, we've got me a machine. I didn't get started right away, but when I finally got started on that tractor pull, Oh, and that thing's been a bugger. You know, the mistakes that I've made, then had to go back and rip out and redo, and then on, um, well, I think it was the second set, because it's so confusing because I make one set at a time, and then the second set on the inner tires, the, the little tire had like a one and a half inch corner square that you would sew on all the corners of the inside of the little tire. And then when I made the big tires, I did all the one inch instead of the one and a half on them. And I'm looking at it. It's on my design wall with all the tractors on there. And I'm just kind of looking at it and admiring it. And I'm looking at them, them wheels. And I'm like, something ain't right. And I'm looking at them. I'm like, oh, I didn't put the right size on there. Oh. And I thought, I am not tearing them out. And then I thought maybe I could take a fabric marker and just kind of make them a little bit bigger. <laughs> but I'm thinking, you know what? It's not perfect. We'll just leave it be. Who's going to notice it, really? You will. Yeah. That's it. Yep. That's you notice it. your own that's mistakes. It. So somebody else is going to look at it in the overall picture and think, oh, that's so cute, you know? Yeah. 
You know, when you're creating something, only you know where the mistakes are. And yes, if you let them eat you up, it's really going to bug you. But I thought, you know, yeah. well, as I wrote the little story behind that tractor quilt, I thought, just leave it alone, Marnay, because I said it was full of, <laughs> well, it has a few mistakes and it's full of mishaps. Well, and, and even other quilters, a lot of times, if you show them your work, they don't even pick, we're our own worst critics. Yep. I think I said a while ago, I made a quilt for my sister, the chicken quilt. Okay. Made the whole thing, got it all together, and I had it up on my hanger, and I'm admiring it. And then I see a mistake. And I had forgot to put the nest under one bird. Oh, no. And I, I, you know, when I gave it to my sister, I said, do you see anything wrong with that quilt? She's like, no, it's beautiful. Yeah. And I was like, well, there's an oddball chicken in there. She doesn't have a nest. But that's a great thing about, you know, and, and I have to tell myself, you know, when I put in my, my story behind my quilt was see the beauty in all things, even if it's not perfect. Yeah. You know, and that's one thing I say about that tractor quilt because um, just see the beauty in it for what it's worth. And, you know, other people's opinions don't matter. Even though I let somebody's opinion kind of bug me a little. And I thought, you know what? Yeah. Nope. This is my quilt. Exactly. Yep. Opinions are great to have. I yep. mean, and I, I love do. hearing and what other love, people think. I love other people's opinions, but, too. But y you can't let other people's opinions eat you up, either. That's what, uh, when people come in the shop, I always tell them, just, you know... I, I can tell you all day long, yeah, that looks great, you know, because I'm, I'm in it to sell fabric. Right. But I'm not going to because I don't want people, I've got shelves and shelves of buyer remorse at home on my, you know, because a group of ladies or a group of people said, oh, this is the perfect thing. And I go, okay, and buy it and walk out of the shop. But that's not what I had envisioned. So right. then it never you know, a lot of people will start a quilt and then they don't like it and they won't finish it. Oh, finish it and donate it. Yeah. Because, you know, if you donate it. I was it, like, you know, I think that you shouldn't judge a quilt too much before it gets done. Because after you get it put together and after you quilt it and bind it, it changes the whole picture of things. And if you don't love it, then like you said, donate it to somebody else because somebody else will love it. Will absolutely love it. Don't waste it. Don't let it sit in your closet. There are plenty of kids in foster care or elderly people that just sit home by themselves. Yeah. You know, that well, would totally well, appreciate. Love a quilt, you know. A quilt yeah. is, a, is a hug, you know. Yeah. A hug of love that somebody created. Somebody will love your quilt if you don't love it. We have a single gentleman who lives next door here to the shop, and he helps us out with different things here at the shop on and off, and uh, we gave him a quilt, I think, last winter. He's, he goes for a walk every day, and he fell and broke his foot. So we gave him a quilt and told him thank you for helping him out over the summer and stuff. Mm -hmm. Letting us use his field. For our Labor Day sale and our events we do outside. But mm -hmm. anyhow, um, and uh, I asked him how his quilt was doing, and he loves it. And he actually would like another one and like a bigger one. <laughs> so, because oh. I just gave him a lap quilt. You know, you but, think about it, you know, a lot of people don't have blankets, you know, or they don't have enough to keep them warm. And I know I was yeah. one of those kids growing up where we didn't have enough blankets in the house. And we heated with wood. Let me tell you, when that wood stove would go out at night, oh. we'd wake up in the morning as kids. You know, I remember my little sisters, all of us jumping into one bed, huddling to keep warm until the wood, until Dad got the wood stove going. You know, and then we'd go downstairs yeah. and hover over it. But we never had enough blankets. I remember, I was always cold as a kid, and I and mm -hmm. I tell that to Jim. That's why I'm a blanket hoarder. You know, where I want to keep all my quilts. You know, I'm like, you know, I have a blanket thing, but I think it's just from you know. Growing up and not having enough. Of course, I think they were colder winters back then too. Get warm. I know. I I am amazed at the days that school is canceled these days. I know, you know? they had the snow like we had back when oh. we were kids. And and for our younger years, we went to a private school and had to wear dresses. And I remember having sweatpants and snow boots and. Did you guys walk? Uh, uphill both ways 
And two feet of snow. My grandfather did. And his one-room schoolhouse still stands there. Wow. He used to sneak home at lunchtime um, because he lived just down over the hill from his one-room schoolhouse. Uh -huh. And his parents, um, my understanding where my great-grandparents were potato farmers, and he would sneak home and hide in the barn and they'd hear him being yelled caught. at on the <laughs> playground to come back to school. You know, he oh wasn't God. coming in from recess. The things you got away with back in those yeah. days, you know. My grandfather always told me stories about a gentleman love that. that was in the neighborhood and he would um, steal stuff from people um, because he didn't really have a place to live. Mm -hmm. And so he'd steal stuff from people and get put in jail just long enough to give himself a place to stay over the winter. Wow. And then they'd so release him in the warm. spring. And yeah. Wow. Yep. And one time my grandfather, he stopped by my grandfather's and... Uh, my grandfather, somebody had stolen some parts off from a bicycle or off from a piece of equipment or something. And this gentleman, he says, well, Hugh, I just happened to have one of those parts. This guy had stolen the part off from my grandfather's whatever bicycle machinery. Mm -hmm. And then he tried to sell it back to my grandfather. And oh he used to, he, from what I understand, um, he used to pick apples and they're off their apple trees or berries and stuff and then try to sell them to them so he was he was yeah. i've heard many a story from grandpa and grandma about this gentleman and and uh i've heard stories also from my mom um what it would have been like to live back in them days you know and i'm sure they were hard days but i mean i don't know the stories and things it's just so I mean, it's it. The cars go much faster than they used to, but yeah. my mom tells stories about how they laid in the road. They laid in the road and listened for the metal bridge in the next town up, and if it was like a clear enough day or whatever, they could lay and they could hear someone go over that metal bridge in Little Marsh. Wow. And uh, you know, nowadays, I I. Going up to my grandparents' farm, I don't even want to cross the road. Somebody would take you out. You'd be hit. And... Yeah, no, no. I remember my aunt and uncle lived in Little Marsh when I was a kid. And me and my cousins would all walk to the little store in Little Marsh. Yeah. Across that metal bridge. And we'd go there and get penny candy. So you know what metal bridge I'm talking yep, about. I do. Because my aunt and uncle lived. And you know where the Shortsville Church is. Yep. That's yep. a distance. Yep. But they said on a clear day... They could lay in the road and listen for someone to cross that bridge up there. Wow, that's wild. I'm just like, wow. Things were different back then. Kids nowadays, you can't even get them off the couch to go lay in the I road. Know. Remember when our parents used to say, go out and play. Yep. Be home by dark. Yep. You don't do that anymore. Too many predators out there. Yeah. I don't think I sewed that one far enough, so. I, so I think my... I have one that I think I'm going to have to rip a little bit out because I was got to talking and. Uh oh. Swerved. Losing concentration. I know yeah. I have to get my needle right on these lines. And it's not always easy to keep the needle lined up on these little crease lines. Now I'm going to have to pick out backings for all these table runners. I didn't even think about that. Oh, yeah. I was just worried about picking out the top. You know, when I made table runners, I would just pick out a... Well, I use muslin a lot. Muslin. For the back. Who's going to see the back of your table runner? I really didn't want to flip it over or anything. Yeah. So I could just load them all on the quilter at the same time. And I just put muslin on the back and... There you go. And sometimes when you use muslin, if you use the colored thread in your design, you could see it on the other side. So if you wanted to turn it, yeah. it was kind of cool. It would just be a plain piece of muslin with some kind of pretty quilting on it. One of my favorite quilts, and, and Todd has even commented on this quilt. Um, one of my favorite quilts that I ever made, and it's not the fabric. It's not the fabric in the quilt, but the backing of my quilt is like a navy blue i think uh -huh. and the thread was a cream colored thread and that stitching just pops off oh, that background yeah. 
and I just that's one of my favorite quilts as far as the quilting um because I love how that white thread pops off that navy blue or that cream colored thread so um, be pretty you know and in the front of the quilt the pieced part that I put all the time into isn't even my favorite part is that that quilting this also kind of makes things double-sided sometimes you mm -hmm. know yeah the piecing on one side the quilting on the other I just pulled it a customer quilt last week that the back was all, it was basically a twofer. There was, you know, you could flip it over and she had pieced the back as well. Oh, so wow. there were, there were two, um, two, uh, quilts in one. Cool. I love to use quilt panels to back quilts. An idea. I um, thought about doing because it like does. That. It gives you two quilts like in a one. Two sided yeah. quilt. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have a lot of pressing to do here once I get all my pieces. I'm almost. I'm kind of halfway right there. <laughs> some popsicle sticks and then some bolts at the top. So I'll turn the corners off the press. Let's see. Let's put them either side on these. Oh, so any plans for this week or this weekend or? Oh, I'm just counting the days. Counting the days? That's all I can do. Just oh. count the days and I'll until, until April. I was so excited that I was going to be here at the shop today and yesterday and I thought, I'm going to plant my flowers in the flower beds out front. Well, let me tell you something about that. Yes, everyone, it is my fault that the weather is what the weather is because I was making plans to plant my it's flowers. Hot and it's well, it's warm and it's cold. Yeah, you know, you know it's it's muddy March. Yep. The weather can't make up its mind, and I still yeah. think we'll, we'll probably end up getting some kind of a snowstorm or something. Yes. Before it's all said and done, because March always seems to give us a dump of snow before it's done. Yeah. In April, sometimes it even snow flurries still in April. Yeah. That was going to get off too easy. We've had a mild winter. Um, yeah, we actually didn't have that bad of a winter this year. Yeah. And speaking of flowers, I had a corner of my yard. I planted flowers. We took all the hostas and everything out of our old house that we tore down, and of course we're Emma's new houses now. My mother, -in -law, my mother in law, and um, I planted those hostas in front of my house, and then um, she gave me a bunch of perennials from her friend that had a huge flower garden. So I had all these flowers that I planted up in the corner of my front yard, and I thought it's far enough away from Jim and his tractors. <laughs> That he wouldn't run over them or run over them with the lawnmower and stuff. Because it was the only place I felt like in the yard it was safe. Because every time I planted something, oh, I got to dig a trench there because I got to put a line in. Or I got to do this. And it's like, really, Jim? You know, I can't. There's nothing safe in my yard. So I started putting everything in pots. But I had all them perennial plants planted over in that corner. And then we had this house fire. And, of course, when the firemen come in, they took out my fenced-in yard for where my dogs were and stuff. And that corner is, was right there. So now we're going to be building the new sewing room and he's getting it ready. He's putting dirt in there to put to get ready for the pad for it. But we can't pour the pad until the house gets put on to, to the pad that we already have because he doesn't want the that heavy equipment running over the pad that he poured. This might crack it. Yeah. Which makes that sense. Makes I don't want anything to happen sense. to it. Yeah. No, so uh, right. he went Do the other once. day he took me over to show me, you know, that he'd got it all graded and everything. I seen that corner and I'm like my, my 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 perennials. I was like, you you dug them all up. You're they're all over there in a pile. He said, and I'm thinking, yep, they're all just dumped in a pile. Oh, no. None of them have come up out of the ground, thankfully. But I'm like, I'm gonna have to get out there with a shovel and and dig them up. And I know what Jim Jim will say. Just go get new ones. But I don't want new. I want what I, for what I had. You know. Well, when you get ready to plant your flowers, you know, uh, call me because. <laughs> Todd got me the most amazing hole digger. Um, you actually, it's for planting bulbs. 
I think it's called an auger or something it's, like it's that. It's a bulb auger. A bulb auger? Mm -hmm. oh. Just basically like a three or four inch auger that you put on the end of a you power drill. You put it on a power drill. Oh, <laughs> Jim's got lots of drills. <laughs> hey, honey, let me borrow one of your power tools. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm hoping this is the last time. Last time I ever have to move Replant. anything. <laughs> Or plant anything, you know, because those were all coming up. I've had, they've been there for two years now, two seasons. And they were all doing great. And there was like some of those little daisies out there. And there was some... I know there's some irises out there. And there's one I could see it sticking up out of the ground. Because irises are kind of like a spring, early... early well, late spring, early summer kind of plant. Mm -hmm. And there was some other ones out there that had some really pretty flowers on it. Some were yellow. I don't know what kinds they were. My mother, she was always good about knowing what plants were. She's she's a huge plant person. But I don't know. I just liked them because they were pretty. And I wanted something pretty out there to make the house look pretty. But like I said, nothing safe with, with the Jim Jim. <laughs> I am horrible when it comes to plants. I know. I'm not that good because I know one summer I spent a lot of money on plants and plant bulbs and I put them in containers, you know, and I'd had luck with some of them. And then we had stray cats coming around and taking a dump in, or, or peeing. Using in my, them as a litter box. Yeah, they were using them as a litter They killed them. So I'm oh, like, wow. I can't have anything around here, you know? It's like, oh my God, keeping everything out of, with the chickens out of the flower beds. We finally, I told Jim, I was like, lock them up and contain them. And, with, and he put up that high fence. Because we tried to have a garden one year, and they were just all over it. I mean, I managed to get out a few tomatoes and some zucchini and stuff, but... We yeah, did. They were always in it, and I'd chase them out, or I'd chase them out the front yard with the flower beds, you know, and we'd just put mulch in there, and it's like, if you got animals, forget it. Yeah, you know? we, we, uh... We're wild animals, even. Yeah, well, luckily our backyard is fenced in, um because of our dogs right. and so we, we did raised flower or like barrel flower uh garden mm -hmm. um and uh it was a little field mouse and or a squirrel or something that kept eating our stems chipmunks to will our do that too chipmunks chipmunks will chew your they don't have a per i watched one do it back in when i lived in sabinsville up in the mountain I had a squirrel and chipmunk problem, and I planted some Gerber daisies. And a chipmunk went out there and chewed it off on at the stem, the stalk, and the flower just laid there. And I'm like, you little... That's crasher, what happened you know? to all of our pumpkins and squash the one year that Chipmunks are notorious for stuff yeah. like that. So, well... You know, they're so cute, but they're a menace. Well, pit bulls are cute, too, but... You can't grow tomato plants with pit bulls. Really? Oh, well, not yes. with Thor, anyway. Not with Thor. Yep, I planted in my um, in my barrels. I planted tomato plants, uh -huh. and I went out one day and I thought, oh, I've got all these little little cherry tomatoes, and I had some bigger tomatoes coming, but they were all green. They weren't quite ripe yet. Uh -huh. And uh, went out a day or two later, and they were completely gone. Oh, and, um, uh, yep, we caught Thor eating the tomatoes off the tomato. He likes green tomatoes. Yes, he does. Green tomatoes and peppers. He ate the peppers, too. And pine bark. So, oh, and pine bark, yeah. Pine bark? Yeah, he's he's in his pine bark eating phase right now, this oh, time of year. God. He likes to eat the bark off our pine thing? face. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. He's a rescue, so it's hard to tell. He might have been dropped on his head as a puppy. <laughs> oh, um, God. He's got some quirky characters. When we got him, we were told that he was food aggressive. He is not food aggressive, but he growls at dinner time. So when we're... He's, he's actually the best out of all the dogs. He stays back while we get their dinner ready. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, he, he goes over and he... So we feed Pippa first, then baby, and they eat on a, at a higher level. And then um, we go over and we put Wally's dish down and Wally has to sit. And then we go over and we put Thor's dish down and Thor has to sit. And then we go back and give Wally a kiss and tell him it's okay for him to eat his dinner. Aww. And then we go over and we go to give Thor his kiss to tell him it's okay for him to eat his dinner. And when you go to give him his kiss, he goes, 
Hurry up and get it over with. And he'll growl, and then you go, okay, and he dives into his dish. (laughs) But we found that that that, uh, series, or or, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Routine. That routine um, gives the girls time to eat their food. Because the boys, they all have dishes where they, it slows them down. But the yeah. boys eat so fast that then they come and they stand next to the girls and hover over them while they're eating their food. So we start out with the girls and let them get started eating. And we slow the boys down a little bit. And it seems to work. Mm-hmm. I used to feed my dogs. I would just feed them all together. But I, when I had Millie and Quincy and Derby... um. I would have to kind of babysit them because Millie, she, you know, she's a big dog and she would eat her food really fast. And then she'd want to come over and see what, you know, before they were finished and help them. And I'm like, oh no, you cannot help them. Yep. <laughs> they wanted everything they had. Well, and baby, when uh, she's all done eating, she goes out and starts licking Thor and Wally's dishes clean. Yeah. After they all ate. Yeah. They, uh, Did you leave any remnants? Let me <laughs> taste what you had. We all had the same thing, you know? Yep. Yeah, they all get the same thing, just different portions. Yeah, I remember when I had Tinker. God, he was he was a goblin. I got him one of them little dishes that, that slows them down. And Tilly is kind of that way, too. I just give him plain kibble. Uh, and I cooked for Quincy, Derby, Melly, and Tinker. That would make him a rice mixture dish, but I haven't, I our, haven't done that for Our for animals Tilly. eat like kings, that's for sure. Uh, I might change up his routine when we get our own place, but I would make them a rice and chicken veggie kind of thing. And then I would, when I had Tinker, I would still give him some of his kibble too, because I figured he needed those nutrients that was in mm-hmm. it because he was a puppy. Uh, but, oh, he like they like good food, you know. I mean, oh, until yeah. he gets a few things that I eat, there's some things I won't let him have. But, I, yeah. you know, if it's chicken or a burger or something, he likes a little variety in his diet, you know. I'm not going to deprive him. That, you know, dogs are meant to be spoiled Exactly. They love They're them, not you know. That long. Exactly. Their lives are their lives are so short, and it's not fair. Yeah. You know. We'll love say the good die young. Yeah. They yeah. love you so much, and they love you unconditional, you know. And you miss them, and. Oh, my girls! They act like I leave them, and they come to work with me every day. So it's not like I leave them. They're not left very often. I don't know what I'm going to do with him when he's older. I mean, I can't leave him anywhere. We went to Bob Evans last night for dinner. I was going to make some blueberry pancakes and, and mm. some eggs. And Jim's like, well, how about if I take you out for dinner, you know? Hey, never pass up on that. Yeah, I was like, oh, well, it was Sunday night. I'm thinking, where the heck do we go? You know, we was going to go to Rossell's, but they closed at 8 o'clock. And it was already 7.30. And I don't like to go in there at the end of the night, you know, and people are cleaning up. They want to get out of there. And I'm yeah. Thinking, so he's like, well, how about Bob Evans? And I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, what time do they close? He said nine. I'm like, okay, we're not pushing the, you know, to closing time for there. So we went there last night and I tried a new dish. I was, I still wanted my blueberry pancakes and eggs, you know, <laughs> and they had some kind of a skillet dish and it was a veggie skillet and they would put salsa on it and Ooh. I don't know, but, um, but they had another one. It was a meat dish and they would put hollandaise on that. I'm like, well, I want the hollandaise. Mm-hmm. So I asked her if she'd leave off the salsa and put hollandaise on it. And it was supposed to have like, and it had sweet potato in it and onions and I don't know what all was in there. It, was, and it had eggs on it. But and it was supposed to have spinach in it, but I don't remember seeing any spinach in it. And I thought it was going to be a bigger dish, but it was kind of it's kind of skimpy. I don't know. But it filled me up. I ate the whole thing, and I took my toast and <laughs> soaked up all the hollandaise. Oh, yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh my god, it was really good, you know. But because I was like I said, I was I really had my heart set on pancakes. I don't know why. When I get my mind on something, it's like that's what I want. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand that. And I love my pancakes, and I've got some frozen fresh blueberries in my freezer and I was like, you know, mm-hmm. put some of them babies in my pancake and scrambled me up some nice fluffy eggs and now your fresh blueberries, did you pick those or No, I bought those, but every every year I would go pick blueberries in Corny. And I don't think they 
I don't know if they don't let you pick there no more because I don't ever see their sign up. Let's see, there's a couple places around here to go picking. and I Yeah, I seen the sign really out good. on Route 6 and I was like, I'm yeah. going to go pick blueberries. And I never did get over here to pick blueberries. And I'm like, I love to pick berries. Yeah. That's the farm girl in me because growing up, me and my sister would go out and pick blackberries. And I've done that since I was a little girl. I love blackberries. Yeah, I think my... Uh... I think when my grandfather and my grandmother, we would help my grandmother can and get stuff ready for canning. That's what I want to get and, back into uh, is canning, too. I think we ate more of what we were working on than... Oh, there it is. Lost a piece, but I found it. Um, I think we ate more of the peas that we shopped and the green beans that we were nipping the ends off from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love fresh vegetables right out of the garden. That was our whole plan of planting a garden was doing canning, but that kind of went in the crapper with the chickens. I tell you, if you got animals, you know, I mean, they're going to deal with things. I mean, I love my chickens and I love letting them loose run in my yard, but man, they can be so destructive, especially in the summertime mm -hmm. when you got flower beds or a garden. It's like, lock them bitties up. Yeah. But they, they eat ticks and... That they do. See, that's a double-ended sword, you know. You yeah. Like to, you know, because I like that they ate bugs in the yard. My God. Yeah, because this year, I think ticks are going to be bad this year. I was laying in bed the other night and thought I could feel something crawling on me. Oh, no. And um, sure enough, I had a tick. tick on you. He hadn't latched on, but... Well, my thinking. guess is that he must have, I must have, um, got him off from one of the kids. <laughs> so, they've all got their flea, their flea and tick collars on, and... Well, I remember back years ago, I had a and derby, and I would walk them, this is before I ever had a fenced in yard, I would walk them, and I'd walk them out to the edge of the yard, and every time we'd come in the house, I could see ticks crawling on them, and Ooh. I'd have to grab them things and run to the sink and flush them down the sink. And I'm thinking, God forbid those little things ever got on me, you know? Mm. Well, I, one morning I woke up and I could, I don't know, I showered. And I felt something on my back and I reached back there and I'm trying and I'm looking in the mirror and I'm trying to see it, you know? And I'm like, oh my God, it's a tick. Mm. I went running over to Brenda and Gordy's. They were my landlords that live next door. And I'm like, Brenda, Brenda, I was like, there's a tick on me. Can you get it off? And I'm like freaking out. I'm practically crying, you know? And she goes and gets her husband and, and he got in some kind, I don't know if that was turpentine he put on there, no. or, or I don't know, maybe it wasn't turpentine, because he said, he put something on there, and he said, and, it, and then he plucked him off, and, oh, huh. I don't know. Them ticks, you know, and if you're thinking to have, you have something flat on your body, it's like, oh. and if that's okay. Yep. I should have got another uh, pressing mat out. I didn't even I would have thought to bring mine, but I was oh. rushing this morning, yeah. because... I had company and phone calls, and I'm like, I gotta get around. <laughs> Still in my pajamas. We have really nice pull-out ironing boards. Love them. Mm -hmm. And I love um, those. But they are behind the camera guy. They're back so, there. They're right yeah, behind me. They're right behind him. So right they are uh, not very usable right now. Somebody yeah. donated me. I think it was from Elmira Peacemakers. Um, they brought these ladies bought me a bag, and there was this tiny little flat ironing board in there, and it's got the shape of an ironing board. And oh, it's that's covered. cute. But I think it's meant for like piecing, so you can just set it by your machine and like with a mini iron or even one of those mm -hmm. little wand irons with a little triangle on the end of yep. it, like for stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's meant for something like that. But I'm like, that is so cute, you know? I was like, I'm going to have that set up by my machine, too. I mean, I have a pressing mat. I like different things. I don't know. Well, I, I've come to a conclusion. I think we need staff. I, I think we we need a guy that we... Uh, Bring me my ironing board. No, change, change, um, we change angles, and then all of my pieces are ironed and ready for me to go to the next step. You know, oh, the, yeah, those cooking nice. shows, they always... Hey, will you clip these for me? And hey, will you press <laughs> these for me? I like Missouri Star when they have that their trio with their oh, uh -huh. them, you know? Somebody else is doing... Yeah, their they're part. showing you how they did yeah. their block and somebody's sewing and somebody's pressing for them. That's kind of a neat thing, you know? Yeah. You know, it gets the job done quicker. 
You really want to get it done. Yeah. I love the cooking shows that they, they put one in the oven and, you know, mm, pull, yeah, and the, then they pull the other, pull one, the out. other one out. There it is, all done. done. Oh, yeah, I'm telling <laughs> Erin, I think that's one of the biggest things that I miss about not having a house is my own kitchen. So when you get into your new kitchen, what are you thinking? Are you thinking a, a vintage stove again? Because you had a beautiful vintage I know, stove. I know. And we talked about that. I would, If I could find another Chalmers, you know, old stove. I don't know. The only downside to that stove was the tiny oven because if mm -hmm. you want to bake like especially like i do at christmas time you know i love to bake that's like my thing. that's why the i could see really you tiny. with a double oven i know and jim had <laughs> talked about putting me another oven and then putting it under that big island counter because we had that mm -hmm. space underneath it that we were mm -hmm. going to put a um shelves in there or whatnot and then he never did it and then we were talking about putting another oven in there so i could have two ovens and yet it's still hidden under the counter and it still had the farm charm from the old stove and stuff so but yeah, we um he measured the space in the new house when we were looking at it, and if we wanted to put an old stove in there, there's a piece that he could take out and still fit a stove in there. And we also want to build like in like the island thing that we had because I really like having a long counter where you can butt up stools because that's where everybody would, would when they would come into the oh, kitchen. Oh yeah, that's the that's the that's the gathering spot where everybody yep. would come and sit and sit up on one of them stools like my dad, you know. And we'd have coffee and sit and chit chat and, you know, whatever. And even my friends, when they would come over on Thursday for sewing, you know, we'd all be in the kitchen. We'd have our coffee and our little donut or sweets or whatever somebody brought, you know, and we'd sit there and we'd talk. And then like, okay, I'm up to the sewing room. So up to the sewing room, we'd go, you know. But I loved that counter, you know, and I loved it when I could bake and, you know, roll out a pie crust or, you know, just that, chicken that and was, dumplings. Yep. Oh yeah, I I don't think I was ever at your house that I didn't come in and sit down to that that uh yeah that counter counter That's where everybody and gravitated to. I would hear you want a cup of coffee <laughs> right next to the coffee. You know bar. me, I'll never pass up a cup of coffee. No, no, me neither. Yeah. I'm a coffee loving fool. Did you guys make any progress on your projects? Oh yes, I got all Absolutely. my popsicle pieces. Well, they're paired up in that last little bit. Yeah, I got my I've centers. got quite a few popsicle pieces here made, so I think um, everybody should stay tuned and see what our finished projects will be. Yeah. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll get these finished up. up. But this is a real easy project, and I know you said this was a free pattern, this yes. Daydreams of Quilts, because I'm yeah. sure people ask about it, but if you look it up. But super simple, jelly roll, and some background fabric. And that would make a fun quilt, and I can't wait to show it off when it's done. I know. I can't wait to show. I can't wait to see those. These table runners. Yeah. Um, perfect trio. Yeah. Um, I can't wait simple, to. Simple. So, simple, simple. Yep. And the Villa Rosa patterns are $2. They're $2. Can't and be tapped. Like I always say, if, if all the instructions can fit on the back of a index card, postcard, whatever you yeah, want to call it. Yeah, that's super simple. It, it's got to be easy enough. And the thing of it is, that pattern, <laughs> look at all the different designs you could do with that and make mm -hmm. so many different looks yeah. with the same simple pattern. That's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, stay tuned. So, yeah, I'll get these finished up yep. and get them quilted throughout the week. And, yeah. Uh, and hopefully yeah. I'll have this all put together, and we, and this will be amazing. It'll be amazing. Ta-da! Yes. Yeah, we'll yeah, do like a excited. show and tell. Yeah, that, that'll that be great. That'll Maybe be great. I can come to you. <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh, I'm looking forward to that future. I mean, well, and I know that at the end of the tunnel. Yes, and I know that we talked about maybe later this week doing some um, antiquing or something. Oh, yeah, so yeah. That oh, would, yeah. I want to yeah. find some more goodies for yeah. the house. You so, know. Yeah, lots yeah. of good things, you know, to look forward to. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Hope you all enjoyed this little long skit of our little sewing happy day. Yes. <laughs> because we don't get to do this very often. No. So I just sit and sew yeah. and chit-chat. So yeah. thanks for joining thanks us fun. and coming along. So I guess that's where we here at Sheets So Creative say we do love all you beautiful creative people out there. And we hope to see you right here in our shop very, very soon. Stay cozy. Cool,